In the lead up to Half-Life Alex, in all of the press, Robin Walker, Dario Casali, David Spare, Greg Coomer, most of the people that were working on the game had slight reservations about what the public would think about the first Half-Life game in over 13 years being a VR exclusive title, a hardware medium that very few of Valve's audience actually had access to, let alone could afford. So before they actually went and announced the game, they did not prepare their index stock. They did not alert other hardware manufacturers of the impending announcement. And it wasn't until only a few weeks before the initial November announcement was made that Valve realized they likely should have been gearing up their index stock. Because when the game announced, every major VR platform sold out. And although other manufacturers, such as Samsung and Oculus, were able to keep up a lot better than Valve with the demand, overall, in the entire industry, it is nearly impossible to get a brand new VR kit for under $1,000, even with the really cheap Windows Mixed Reality sets going for nearly $800. Now granted, this was a perfect storm for everyone involved. Before Half-Life Alex, no one really thought VR would be expensive exploding in the ways that it did. And then once people started to try and catch up with the demand, the manufacturing plants for all of the components went down for a few very obvious reasons. So now we're in a weird situation where Valve has released a very highly acclaimed VR title that everyone wants to play, but not everyone has access to the hardware to be able to play it, even if they have the money to do so. And Valve just can't keep up with index demand. <laughs> This video is sponsored by Letty Shops. Letty Shops is an international cashback service that allows getting back up to 30% of all payments on your online purchases. There are more than 2,000 retailers in different categories available for cash back, like Walmart, eBay, Best Buy, Macy's, and Groupon. You can earn this cash back through the website, the mobile app, or with a browser extension. Letty Shop has an effective technology of tracking all purchases and has a live customer support center. Register now and make your purchases within one week and you can get premium cash back of 30 plus percent as a welcome offer. The link of which is down in the video description below. So what is Valve to do? Well, they're gonna do something completely out of the ordinary for them and work with third parties to deliver VR hardware to the masses as quickly as they possibly can. And the first announced partnership was a few weeks ago with HP. HP had already released one of their Windows Mixed Reality sets with the Reverb 1. We now have the Reverb G2 being displayed on Steam as official Valve hardware, something that only the official OG Vive can also say. Meaning, out of eight pieces of hardware being advertised for sale on Steam, only two of them are third party, and the other one was the original HTC Vive, so Valve very much is backing the HP Reverb 2. And it was only a few days ago that we got information on what this system was actually going to hold. The lenses and the audio solution are directly from Valve. The lenses themselves are not identical to what you have on the index. They're specifically tuned for the higher resolution panels that the Reverb 2 has. And that's true. You actually have significantly higher internal panel resolution on the Reverb. And this is an LCD panel, meaning you can do sub-pixel resolution trickery that the index also does. But the audio solution, principally developed by Emily Ridgway in the mid-2010s, is also going to be shipping on the Reverb 2. Meaning, the index off-ear floating audio solution that is the sleeper feature that everyone should be paying attention to in the VR space is shipping, officially, not a clone, the real deal on the Reverb 2. Road to VR published an exclusive preview. They had their hands on one of their development units, and this is no joke. Yes, it is inside-out tracking, but the Windows Mixed Reality inside-out tracking standard has been improved incrementally over the last few years, and personally, having tried the Odyssey Plus, it's not that bad, and apparently this is going to be better than that. The Reverb 2 also has a physical IPD slider just like the Valve Index, and it also has a 110 degree field of view, only 20 degrees smaller than the Valve Index at peak FOV, it has a 90 hertz refresh rate, which sure, the Index can go up to 144 hertz, but if you haven't tried it, you wouldn't know what you're missing, and of course, a higher resolution than the Valve Index. All of this with controllers that are comparable to the Oculus Touch is selling right now, as of recording, 
for $600. The Valve Index is 1000 and this is $400 cheaper. And you get the same audio solution, a higher resolution, comparable FOV, a physical IPD slider, and a 90 hertz refresh rate higher than all the current flagship Oculus devices. This is an Oculus Rift S, but better in every conceivable way. Plus, it has full backing from Valve, and I am positive this is not the only partnership Valve is willing to take. The only reason we are seeing index-level hardware on third-party headsets is because Valve screwed up and they couldn't keep up with the index demand following the announcement of Half-Life Alex. And now you have a significant amount of people flocking over to that medium with nowhere to purchase. The Reverb G2 is available right now for pre-order for $600. If you want to get into VR, this is the best way of doing it right now, and it has Valve's full backing. So what does this mean for the index? Well, there's likely going to be a little less pressure on Valve to consistently restock that hardware, a task that, given the circumstances of the world today, is nearly impossible. And also, we're likely going to be seeing other third-party relationships forming, which down the road may lead to those relationships blossoming and causing other hardware products to be developed in conjunction with Valve. But for now, we have the HP Reverb 2. We likely will see another headset from Valve and another company within the next few months, because I'm sure this reverb will be sold out anytime soon as well. Half-Life Alex is no joke. The VR industry is something that will consistently grow as long as Valve is here to do things in the public, especially with the recently released tools. The only other step really they need to take is, in a year, hire the best VR creators using the Half-Life Alex tools and possibly allow the absolute best material to be sold as standalone titles. But hell, that's a whole other video. Anyways, just wanted to let you know about Valve's new VR headset, and thank you very much for watching. I'm Tyler McVicker, this is Valve News Network. Have a good day. Adios.